If you're thirsty right now, what do you do? Given that you're watching a YouTube video, I suspect you're in a developed country. You just go to your kitchen and get a nice, clean, safe glass of water. On the trail, things aren't that simple. Water's a beautiful thing, life couldn't exist without it, but it's one of those things we really don't think about unless we have too little or too much. You may think that out in the backcountry, getting water is as simple as filling a canteen from a stream, yet sometimes we end up with a pothole in a national forest. How do we deal with that? Back in the 1960s, I'd take my water straight from a stream, put it in a canteen, and start drinking it. By the time the 70s rolled around, I had advanced well past that. I was still drinking straight from streams, but I felt uneasy about it. As an older hiker now, drinking untreated water is like playing Russian roulette with diarrhea and dehydration. Now, I always treat my water. But how do we treat water? We can boil it, we can use ultraviolet light, filters, or chemicals. Here's a chart from the CDC showing some options in the contaminants that they deal with. The perfect ones, the ones that treat everything, are boiling, using a purifier, using ultraviolet light, or combining a filter with other treatment. But most hikers just use a filter. Why is this? If you look at the filter column in the table, there's this big red X. It's not good for viruses. To answer this, we need to look at each more closely. Boiling requires normal cooking equipment. It's conceptually simple. We all know how to boil water. It uses fuel up, and we have to keep the water boiling for one to three minutes. It takes time, the time to boil the water, and if we're using it for drinking, the time for it to cool down. We can combine it with cooking, so if we had untreated water, we can boil it, then use it for reconstituting our meals. Ultraviolet light can be used to sterilize water. It works best in clear water. In dirty, murky water with a lot of sediment, the UV light can't penetrate throughout the container. This model, the KD9 SteriPen Adventurer, uses type 123 batteries. They're shaped like sea cells, but smaller. A glass tube emits the ultraviolet light, and I worry that this is breakable. It also doesn't improve taste or remove sediments. It just makes the water safe as long as it's clear enough to begin with. There's no visible confirmation of results, though. With all the other ways of purifying water, boiling, adding chemicals, putting it through a filter, you see something happening. With the ultraviolet light, a little light comes on that says, yeah, you're done, trust me, it's safe. That worries me. Though the other methods can fall short also. Filters are the most commonly used. I've tried many filters, for example, this Katie Dine hand pump. Cartridges are rated for about 750 liters. There's gravity systems like the Platypus Gravity Works filter. Fill the dirty bag with untreated water and just let it flow through the filter. It's rated at about 1500 liters per cartridge. It's convenient for groups and at camp, though a bit less so if you're hiking alone. Another popular filter is the Sawyer Squeeze. Lightweight and inexpensive and bare bones. It's basically a naked filter with a squeeze bag for pushing water through the filter into a bottle or bladder. A good purifier, like the MSR Guardian, filters down to 20 nanometers versus about 300 nanometers for most of the other filters. Small enough to trap viruses like norovirus, which is about 27 to 30 nanometers in diameter, but filtration always has a margin of error, especially when it comes to things as small as viruses. It's also very expensive and a bit heavier than other options. Still, for group hikes, it may be worth considering. Chemical treatments include forms of chlorine and iodine. There are liquids and tablets. Sometimes the iodine comes with a flavor killer to neutralize the taste, which tells you something about that option. Aquamira makes liquid chlorine dioxide. You combine drops from parts A and B, put the mix in your water supply, then wait 30 minutes to 4 hours depending on what you suspect may be in there. These two ounces will treat about 115 liters. That's not a lot compared to filters, but for trips of less than two weeks, it may meet your needs. Chlorine dioxide is also available in tablet form. On a per liter basis, it's by far the most expensive option, but as an emergency backup, it's a good choice. For cost, we need to consider the initial acquisition and the recurring costs, such as for filter cartridges or batteries. A good way to look at recurring costs is on a per 100 liters basis. For me, that's about two weeks on the trail. This isn't meant to overwhelm you with numbers and data, but to help you see how these different water treatment methods compare. Some filters, like the Sawyer Squeeze and Platypus Gravity Feed, need regular back flushing to keep them flowing well. UV purifiers, like the SteriPen, rely on batteries, and if it's cold, they need to be kept warm. We also have to protect filters from drops and freezing. If a microfilament filter freezes, it's not a matter of thawing it out, it's a matter of throwing it out. The filter is ruined. Chemical treatments like Aquamira take time to do their job, sometimes up to four hours for water that might contain cryptosporidium. This isn't about finding a best product, it's about knowing the trade-offs. 
Some are cheaper, some are faster, some are lighter, some are simpler, some are more effective. Your choice depends on the kind of hiking you're doing, how reliable your water sources are, how much margin of safety you want, and how easy it is to use. My primary treatment method is the Platypus Gravity Works filter system. For water with a lot of visible floaties or sediments, I pre-filter through a bandana into the dirty bag. It's important to keep the bandana isolated. By definition, it's contaminated after the first use. While hiking, I store it with my filter kit, away from everything else. Never cross-contaminate clean bottles and cups with untreated water. Take extra care to keep anything that touches untreated water away from everything else. As a backup, I bring a supply of chlorine dioxide tablets with me. I keep my ear to the ground and listen for reports of waterborne illnesses in the area. Catching norovirus is not pleasant, something I fortunately have not experienced firsthand. It's especially bad for older hikers since it can lead to dehydration. If I hear or suspect water I'm treating may contain viruses, I transfer my reserve water to the bladder, then filter suspected water into the reserve bottle. I then add the chemical treatment. That way, the chlorine dioxide will have time to work while I use the water in the bladder. In the end, you'll need to decide what's right for you. If you find this content useful, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this or other topics you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for watching.